For the case study, we're going to use the wiring diagrams for our diagnostics. We're going to use the same wiring diagrams you're going to use, and the diagnostic techniques will apply to all vehicle manufacturers, even though we're working on a Jeep Chrysler diagram. We're going to determine the factors needed for normal operation from the diagrams during the circuit analysis. Remember, this is our, one of our first attributes we have to look for. And next, we're going to use voltage drop testing of the problem circuits, the ones we have pointed to that are indicated by the best place to start by the pattern analysis. We're going to separate out the diagnostics with pattern analysis to a separate chapter so you can easily go back and recognize it. We're going to be looking at lighting circuits, and lighting circuits are high side B plus control. That means controlling the B plus supply is referred to high side switching. Many of our lighting circuits are examples of high side switching. In fact, most of them are. Some high side switchings will come from logic devices. It may be a relay, it may be a switch, it may be whatever combination you're going to have. There's a variety of devices. We'll be developing our failure pattern as we analyze each circuit. First, we're going to map them out. Then we're going to stop and do the failure pattern analysis. We're going to start, as you said, with voltage drop testing. Let's talk about that for a moment. Let's review real quickly. Here's a typical voltage drop on ground. Ground is the zero reference. It's the other wire in the circuitry. We have a wire coming from B+, plus, in this case coming through a logic device, and we have a ground to the lamps. Ground should be near zero. In this example, we're 0 0.02 volts. That's normal and fairly typical. Voltage drops are going to affect the operation of the device they supply. Very high voltage drops, either in hot and B plus or ground, can cause complete failure of the device. Even though the device is capable of normal operation if B plus and ground were normal. Smaller voltage drops can interfere with normal operation. All voltage drops reduce the voltage available to the device they power. Some voltage drops are intentional, such as light dimming. Here's an example. Here's a solid state light dimmer. An FET driver transistor can vary the resistance of the control to control the interior light brightness. This is an example of what 50% brightness looks like. We're supplied with battery voltage, yet we only have 6 volts available at this actual device because we dropped the other voltage in the FET. It did not turn on fully. It only turned on 50%. This is an example of voltage drops. We see it every day. We know it's possible. So let's talk about our case study. This vehicle has a number of lighting and power circuits that are not operating properly. The lighting requires B plus in ground for the lamps to operate properly. The lighting is controlled by control module switches and relays and we need to pay attention to those during our, our mapping. We'll need to determine which of these circuits are operating normally and which have a problem because the problem circuits will map us toward the common areas. The vehicle has several rear external lighting problems along with some power receptacles. We'll cover those later. Let's talk about the lighting case study first. We'll start with the rear lighting problems. Start by identifying the problem in normal circuits. That's going to map us into an area we can use this. We're going to use this analysis to decide where to start testing and do a minimum amount of testing. That's what profitability is about. We will develop a fault pattern map that will point towards toward the likely problem areas and eliminate the normal parts of the circuit. Now let's define this statement of eliminate. We eliminate normal parts of the circuit. That means parts of the circuits we don't have to test. That's what productivity is. It is working normally and we have proof that it is working because of the observations we're going to make. The problem circuits could have relay problems, blown fuses, missing B+, bad ground, or an inoperative lamp, whatever the case may be. First of all, the tail light, parking light, marker light, all rolled into one, on the left rear is out and not operating. The right side tail parking marking lamp is normal. Oh, the left turn signal is out. Both brake lights are out. The high brake light is out. The left backup light is out. The tag lights operate normally. The B plus outlet to the cigarette lighter is dead. So what we're looking at is a whole bunch of problems. Where do you start? A lot of places to go. Some people say, well, this many things wrong, it must be a fuse. Okay, let's let it, the data point us to problem area.
Some of the normal circuits have shared wiring that are also used by the abnormal circuits. What that's going to do for us, if we see the right tail light, park and market light working, then the left one has to work to it. They use the same fuse. That's what we're talking about. Let's look at this on paper and we'll start figuring it out. These lights we have down here with the green flashing, they're working normal. And we're looking just at the rear on this diagram. These lights are the ones that are not working. And we're going to talk about the patterns they show us and see what's happening. Where do you start? We've looked at these circuits. We're going to highlight the wiring of the problem circuits. We're looking for a point where the problem circuits come to a common point. Where do they all join? A single circuit failure will join with a circuit that has normal operation. That's saying that particular circuit is not bad. Something in that circuit is bad. Can all these problems be caused by a single failure? No. There's too many problems. They're too varied. And there's no one single fuse. We've highlighted the ones that are not working. Now, we've got two things going on here. We're going to talk about that. But let's spend some time looking at this. All brake lights are out. But the right side, it has some, two of the lamps in that assembly is working. Let's take a look and zoom in and look at that left tail light assembly. This area here, marked by that box right there. Notice the box in the center. That's the left tail light assembly. Every lamp in that assembly is out. We're going to start next and analyze what these two patterns show us and the directions they're pointing us because they're pointing us in two different directions.